Friday night's NASCAR Truck Series championship race was absolutely pathetic. A nearly three hour truck race with a red flag period, 12 cautions that accounted for 43% of the race, saw Christian Eckes win the race and Ben Rhodes win the championship, but it wasn't without a ton of controversy from basically all sides. You had your championship four drivers all running into each other or someone else, all four trucks left with some sort of damage at the end of the night. You have your winner in Christian Eckes, who just was completely forgotten about by the FS1 booth. Speaking about FS1 and Fox, they called this race remotely like they have been doing all year with one of the most janky looking setups we've seen uh, in quite some time. The monitors weren't level, the monitors that they use behind the announcers to make it look like they're at the track when they're clearly not because who would put curtains behind the windows and the, now the TV monitors don't even line up. They look super janky. There are people who have iRacing setups and their monitors line up better than this and Fox is a major media company so that was embarrassing for them. Jamie Little was on the call and she has about as good of an announcing voice as someone calling high school field hockey. She has no business calling a major championship race. So between the booth having absolutely no idea what was going on, again, it felt like a choose your own adventure story, which I mentioned before. And we all found out about all the surprises at the same time together. And it was just this really heartwarming experience when a car would crash and they'd be like, oh, somebody crashed. How did that happen? Well, if you were at the track, one of the three of you could potentially have seen what happened there instead of us having to wait for a replay, which Fox probably doesn't even have. Or we have to take an onboard from a truck that was 13 spots back and then we can kind of maybe piece it out like it's the Zapruder film. Overall, just really bad production quality from them. And then let's get into the race for a moment, and we'll just jump to the second half of this race when everything just delved into absolute chaos and a really, really poor display of racing. The Truck Series has completely morphed in the Arca Series. Arca is now a respectable product for the most part. Uh, but the Truck Series, there's just no... There's no respect in the Truck Series at all from anybody, and they will just drive over you for absolutely... Nothing. I mean, even coming to the checker flag, when Ben Rhodes was racing Grant Enfinger, you had Dean Thompson and uh, I can't remember who the other driver was, maybe Caden Honeycutt, potentially. They were racing Grant like they were racing him for the championship. Like, just let him go. Obviously, you know he's chasing down Ben Rhodes here. Why would you put yourself in the way of the championship? One spot at the end of the season, if it's not for the win, doesn't matter for you guys. And like I said, there's just no respect from, from anybody over here in the truck series. And then that takes us to Carson Hostbar, who has zero respect for basically anybody else on track. And he ends up crashing then championship leader Corey Heim, who had the best truck all night. Corey Heim should have been the champion. And instead, he passes Carson Hosevar, and then Hosevar decides that all of a sudden he needs to drive over his head. He goes down into turn three and just runs into the back of Heim, spins him out, gives the 11 a decent amount of damage, sends him to the back. And then you have Carson restarting second. And they cut to the onboard of him, and he's pounding the steering wheel, and he's like, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Listen, Carson Hosevar doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. This is who Carson Hosevar is. He's a guy that continually runs into other drivers, right hooks them, sends them into the wall, and head on more often than not, he just runs people over. He has no respect for anybody else out on the racetrack. And then he goes and does this in a championship race to one of the people he's racing with. And he expects everybody to just be like, oh yeah, you know, he's he's apologetic. No, dude. It's just who it's who he is. And if that's who he wants to be, fine, be that guy. But don't do this fake act of like, well, uh. so then on the next restart, he decides to absolutely tank his season by going from second to 19th on a lap and a half. The Fox booth finally got around to talking about that a few laps later and his season was basically over from that point. Corey Heim even passed him and then Heim decided to wait on Carson Hosevar and he kept dropping back a couple positions until he got alongside Hosevar. Hosevar goes to the outside of him and then on the corner exit Heim just pushes up puts them both in the wall caution comes out and that ends up costing Grant Enfinger a championship. Without that caution coming out Grant Enfinger ends up winning the championship. So if anybody should be really pissed outside of Heim for Hosevar Grant Enfinger should go down and beat wholesale ass on both Corey Heim and Carson Hosevar for cost. So you have those two dummies in Heim and Hosevar that end up taking each other out. And for Corey Heim, hindsight 2020 probably shouldn't have done that. Like if he could have wrecked the 42 without damaging himself, there's a decent chance that maybe he could have contended at the very end of the race the way everything played out. But then of course that caution ends up setting up a number of other restarts, ends up taking us 29 laps into overtime. An absolutely insane amount of laps. And then NASCAR, 12 hours before, 
Steve Phelps, NASCAR president, said that they love this playoff format. He said that it's not gimmicky. If you think it's gimmicky, you're wrong. Well, it's definitely gimmicky because that is not a way to determine a champion. He also said that they would put NASCAR officials up against any officials in any sport because they're making decisions in real time. And in typical NASCAR being consistently inconsistent fashion, coming to the white flag on the penultimate lap, you have Tyler Ankrum cutting a tire down, going into turn three, pounds the wall, NASCAR just holds the caution because they've decided that we just need to get this race over with, and that's NASCAR being inconsistent once again. Not that I wanted to see another restart, but I want them to be consistent, and you have a guy hitting the wall that hard in the ARCA race. We saw them throw a caution for a guy cutting a tire down, and he didn't hit a single thing. This dude pounds the wall, no caution for that. Even the flag man seems super annoyed by this whole process. At one point, he's just holding the yellow flag out, head down on the bar of the flag stand, just like, can we get this over with at this point? And then NASCAR manages to paint the restart zone in the completely wrong spot. I mean, I'm not, like, they didn't adjust a little bit. 200 feet in front of where it should have been. How? How does that even happen? It makes no sense to me.